Shalom Chavrim, I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching the Noon Institute of Biblical Research, and it is an honor and a privilege to get to come and speak with our friends here once again. Uh, amazing things that are going on, and I wanted to share some insights, actually from the book of Joel. We're going to be going over here to the book of Joel uh, and studying these scriptures together here. Let me actually get it back up to the top, make sure we have it ready there. Oop, looks like we lost everything that we had in Joel, or did we? No, we did not. Okay, we did not. So anyway, uh, we're going to be talking about that here in a little bit, talking about former rain, latter rain, things like that. Uh, but before I did, I wanted to speak with you just a little bit about from the book of Amos. Amos chapter 8 specifically, and, uh, and I, my focus is verse 11 for just a few moments here with you. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Notice that. It's not that there's not bread and that there's not water, but the famine is for hearing the words of the Lord. Remember how Yeshua always was saying, he that hath an ear, let him hear. Or actually, it's in the book of Revelation, let him hear. Uh, and Yeshua said the same thing, you know, that you have eyes to see and cannot see, uh, and you have ears to hear and cannot hear, right? This was his own words that he spoke to my own kindred, the Jewish people. And, uh, and speaking of that, I, I, this really needs to be brought up in here because if you remember, I was teaching this over in Zechariah not too long ago because of the teachings that are going around that we have to take a hold of the, the, the skirt of the Jew or the tzitzit of the Jews. Uh, and when you take all of the tzitzit of the Jews, well, then, uh, you know, you'll learn something. And sadly enough, there, there are those that are teaching that you know, this Jewish man mentioned right here on your screen, if you look at the screen here with me, it is, they will take a hold of the wing, a singular wing of a Jewish man. That man is Jesus Christ. There's no way around it. All right? And of course, then it goes on to say, All right, we will go with you. That is in the plural there. For we have heard that God is with you. That reason why that is in there is because of the fulfillment of that prophecy over in the book of Acts chapter 2, when the 120 that were in the upper room, these were men and women that had taken hold of the wing of Jesus Christ. They had believed him. And then as the 10 from the nations had come down for the feast of Pentecost, those of the house of Israel that had been believing the prophecy there, they came down, they took a hold of, uh, uh, or they were taking a hold of the tzitzit. You could say, if you want to say tzitzit, or the wing of them because they believed that God was with them. Why? Because they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, wow. I've done the teaching on that. Won't go into that again right now, but what a beautiful message. And I'm going to tell you something, friends. What I'm seeing here, though, this is so important. Let's read a little bit of Amos 8 together, though. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, I will darken the earth in the clear day. I will turn your feast into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. And I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins and baldness upon every head. And I will make it as the mourning for an only son and the end thereof as a bitter day. I mean, it's just terrible what took place there. The morning of an only son. And behold, the days come, and saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor thirst for water, but of hearing the word of the Lord. We realize, if you look at what's highlighted in green here, I will make it as the morning of a, for an only son, the end thereof is a bitter day. That clearly is a prophecy of Jesus Christ and his death. We know that the scripture, verse 9, it shall come to pass that day, said the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noonday. That was at the time of Christ. All right? 
But then he goes into verse 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread. Christ is that bread nor a thirst of water. He said to the woman at the well, if you knew it was that was talking to you, you would ask me for a drink. I'll give you a drink. You don't have to come here anymore. So he is the waters of life. But the famine will be of the hearing of the word of the Lord. It's not that the word is not there. The word has already covered the earth and the land and the sea and everywhere. The gospel of Jesus Christ has gone to all the known world back then and even today. But the famine that is happening today is the hearing. The people have become dull of hearing. They have eyes to see and ears to hear, but they're blind. They can't see and they can't hear. They're deaf and can't hear. This is what Jesus said about his own people. My people. All right? So, in fact, let me just pull this. We can pull that up real quick. Ears to, let's see. Ears, hear eyes okay let's just see if we can't find that real fast all right here we go and you guys can see the screen so you can see it for yourself matthew 13 15 for this people's heart is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and i should heal them you hear what he says here going into verse 16 but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear okay Matthew 13 verses 15 16 for verily verily I say unto you verse 17 that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When any one heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and cast it, catcheth away that which is sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. Wow, friends. And we're seeing, even though it was being manifested then, even though the prophecy that is spoken of here in the book of Amos is being fulfilled back then, we see a repeat of that today. The people are, instead of believing the Lord Jesus Christ and holding to his word, they're being bewitched and taken back underneath the Pharisaic teachings instead of taking a hold of that wing of Christ Jesus. They're being bewitched. And they're taking a hold of the wing of, of my own people, the Jewish people over in Israel and the rabbis. And instead of believing the words of Jesus Christ, they take a hold of the rabbis now because it's being taught not all messianic circles. I mean, you get one messianic minister that preaches that, you can't blame it on all these guys. They don't all believe that. I realize that. But even the brothers that are doing that, you know, I, I'm like, brother, how could, you, how could you do that? I mean, this is Pharisaic doctrines. Did we forget what Jesus said? All right? I mean, look. Well, you know, you have to remember the Pharisees, okay? Scripture, Jesus says here, he calls them Matthew 3, 7, generation of vipers. Who hasn't warned you? That's John. Sorry about that. That's John saying it. Let me pull this up a little higher. All right, let me just, let's just put the word vipers in. Okay, Matthew 12, 34, there you go right there. Oh, generation of vipers, who can you, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the mouth, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. All right. He says it, chapter 23, verse 33. You serpents, oh, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall you scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, 
that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias the son of Barchaeus whom you slew between the the uh, the temple and the and the altar right what else he said you look here uh, you know and, and you have to understand not all Jews are vipers not all Jews uh, not all Pharisees we should say uh, came from this different from these different sects here but here we have in John 8 44 I'll take out the the, the the Greek parts in there so let me let me take you also over to John the Gospel of John uh, chapter 8 and John says here you are of your father the devil and the lust of your father you will do he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaketh the lie he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it and because I tell you the truth you believe me not which of you convinceth me of sin and if I say the truth why do you not believe me he that is of God heareth God's word ye therefore hear them not because you are not of God and then I read to you over here in Amos the days come saith the Lord I will send a famine in the land not a famine of bread and oh nor thirst for water but of hearing the words of the Lord so they can't they don't have the ability to hear God's word and who was that there let's see wait a minute hang on just saying here then answer the Jews and said to him say we not that thou art a Samaritan and hast the devil they said that, so the funny thing is they were saying he had the devil right they said that Jesus had the devil and Jesus recognizing what they think and what they believe and everything said they, they they were the devil because they didn't have the ability to hear and Jesus says I have not a devil but I honor my father and you did do dishonor me right but who is he talking to let's back up and see who he was actually talking to right Ah, uh, let's see. Because uh, I, I know it's the Pharisees, but I just need to back up to where we can see where this all gets started here so you can see exactly who he's actually speaking to there. Um, here we go right here. Verse 13, the Pharisees therefore said unto him, Bear us record of thyself. Okay? So the Pharisees were saying this. All right? You got to remember the Qumranite community and the Qumranite community where the Dead Sea Scrolls are written are not the Essenes. I don't believe that. All right. And I'm going to address that totally separately. Uh, for those of you that don't uh, have not watched there, uh, their big issue come, came out saying that we believe the Essene Humane Gospel. Uh, no, that's not true. Uh, years ago, we were looking into it. It got brought out prematurely different issue altogether we are going to address that though but some say because Steve quotes out of the Dead Sea Scrolls uh, secretly he still believes the Essene gospel no because you have to understand the Essenes so I know that some scholars say that the Qumran community were the Essenes but if you look at Rachel uh, Ilari a professor uh, works with uh, translating the Dead Sea Scrolls she said it was the Zadokite community and not to mention if this a seen humane gospel it was um, about the animal rights and the community there at Qumran believed in animal sacrifices so uh, to me it's just not the same but nonetheless let's take focus on this the Pharisees therefore said in him bear us thy record of thyself thy record is not true so we know he's talking about the Pharisees here when when he gets into this thing there and he calls them he says you're you are of your father the devil all right and we already know where that comes from. Obadiah, they mixed the seed, they mingled the seed. It was the priests and the Levites, right, that did that. So, different subject altogether. But anyway, just kind of setting the stage here. I don't want to waste too much time. Let's get into the book of Joel, though. Uh, I was reading this because, as I've said, stated to you guys, I'm going back looking at the prophecies. So many of these prophecies I realize are prophecies that have been fulfilled. There are some that, that you could either say they weren't fulfilled, you could say they were, uh, uh, they're, they're happening now. There's a lot of things we could say on that. Uh, in fact, I'm going to be getting into Daniel just a little bit, Daniel chapter 11. 
uh, as well. But anyway, Joel says here, chapter two, blow you the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm in my holy mouth, and let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong people, there have not been ever the light, neither shall be any more after it, even the years of many generations. All right, now, are we looking in Joel chapter 2 here at the beginning there, is this when, when, when God comes and he brings about the judgment and destroys the earth, or is this during the times of Christ uh, when as the Qumranites from the Dead Sea Scroll area down by the Dead Sea said that the uh, priests that were in Jerusalem were the sons of darkness. That's, that's a little difficult to tell at the beginning there. All right, It almost seems to be that this may be speaking of when that destruction comes. As the scripture says, the earth shall melt with a fervor and heat. It passes away with a great noise. Uh, we know that the Lord comes with 10,000s of his saints uh, to bring about judgment on this. Or a lot of things that could be said there, right? But anyway, if you get let's let's scoot right on down to verse 11 is where I want to pick this up at because there were some very interesting things that I began to notice in Joel's prophecy. Verse 11, and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? All right, that's why I'm thinking this is when he's come to bring judgment and the wicked are destroyed. I mean, we're looking at a Gog Magog scenario, and I know you might say, whoa, whoa Steve, wait, the Gog and Magog, that's when they come against Israel. <sighs> Got to come to this conference we have here in Orlando next weekend, not this coming Saturday, but February the 8th. Don't forget that. Put it on your calendar. Get your tickets. Go to IsraeliNewsLive.org. Get your tickets while you can. Uh, and, and believe me, it's, it's exciting what's coming. All right, but watch what he says here. Therefore also know, saith the Lord, turn you even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping with mourning. And rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him of the evil. All right? Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering, a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach. That the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and you shall be satisfied therewith. I will no more make your reproach among the heathen, but I will remove far off from you the northern army, and I will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and the hinder part toward the utmost sea. And his stink shall come up, and his ill savor shall come up, because he hath done great things." Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, then he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. Now, actually, in the English, should be the word vats. Uh, vats because it is overflowing with wine. It's the container, right? Now, before we go a little further, let me just stop here for a moment. This former rain and latter rain. If you look over here in the Hebrew language, I brought the same verse up here. And, and Joel is a very difficult book in the Hebrew Bible because in the book of Joel, uh, the Hebrew Bible is laid out very differently. So it's very difficult for me to pull this one off for you. I think in Joel 2, we're okay. Yeah, we are okay in Joel 2. Still same chapter, same verse when we get over here. Now, if you look here 
on your screen with me. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he giveth you, in the purple, ki natan lechem, into the yellow, we see the former rain, et hamore, doesn't say former rain. It says teaching. He gives to, the, to you the teaching, and it's specific teaching, et hamore. More is the word for teaching, but we have the definite article, hey, plus the word et in front of that. So we know that this is the original teaching, the true word of God, in just measure they put in there. All right, but it doesn't say just measure either. It literally says et hamore, and you go into the orange in the Hebrew there, let tzadika. Okay, he gives to them or to you the righteous teaching. Then it says, if you go past the semicolon in the Hebrew language, they're still in the orange, ve'oed lechem geshem more, and comes down to you the teaching rain, more, geshem more, all right? That's the teaching rain, all right? Umashelach kosh bereshon, the latter as, if, as it were the first. Whoa! So what is the former and latter rain? It is the pureness of the word of Almighty God being brought to you. It is not some fancy preacher preaching here uh, 2,000 years after the coming of Jesus Christ saying, we got the latter rain is falling down upon us. No, sir. It was the teaching the righteous teaching, which bring me, brings me to a very interesting point here that I wanted to share with you. And this here, as you look on your screen, will blow it up a little bit bigger, make sure you guys can see it okay. I'll first do the English side for you. This is from the, uh, I believe it's the book of Habakkuk, yes, in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now they're doing their commentary as well. So take the commentary with a grain of salt always got to be careful that's commentary anybody can have an opinion doesn't make it right but it's interesting some of the things that they say here but they quote from Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 14 for the earth will become full of the knowledge of Yahweh's glory just as water fills the sea hmm right then there's a blank spot the interpretation of the word in is in his return I thought that was interesting Enters your turn, all right? But what's interesting to me is when you go down here, you look over here to the, this side here, all right? And I have in green, we get down to the bottom. All right, watch this. Well, let me read over here in the English first. The wicked priest who pursued the teacher of righteousness to consume him with the heat of his anger in the place of his banishment in the festival time during the rest of the day of atonement. All right, they're looking at the scripture in Habakkuk 2.15 and the, where it says, Woe to anyone that maketh his companion drunk, spilling out his anger and even making him drunk to look at their festivals, right? And then there's a blank spot, but it goes on to say that they interpret this as being the, the priest, the wicked priest, uh, who is pursuing after the teacher of righteousness. Now, I bring this up for mainly one reason. The word teacher of righteousness. Throughout the... Qumran scrolls, where you get commentary, things like that, they often talk about the more hatsid, uh, hatsidak, okay? The righteous teacher, or the teacher of righteousness. Either way you want to say that. I was up praying not too long ago, early one morning, about 3 o'clock in the morning, prayed there for a while, and the Lord laid upon my heart the reason why the Qumranite community called, spoke about this coming teacher of righteousness was because they believed it to be the Messiah. All right? And they got it from Melchizedek or Melik Tzadik. Okay? Uh, the, the king of righteousness, right? The king of righteousness would return and he would be what? The righteous teacher all right that's where it comes from that's why if you look right here uh at the yellow part and then it goes into blue the interpretation of the word and then it goes back to yellow in his return 
All right. So they actually believed that he would return and he would be called the teacher of righteousness. Now, do they believe in that return that it is Melchizedek that returns? Uh, do they believe this is when God spoke to, to Moses at the mountain there? I, I don't know the answer to that. All I know, uh, when Moses met God at the burning bush there, uh, that could be where they believe it's the return from there. But we do know that God says to Moses, I'll raise up a prophet likened unto you. And if they don't hear that prophet, then they'll be cut off. All right. So we already know that. So I just wanted to share that with you, that righteous teacher, because we're looking here in the scripture about the former and latter reign. And it literally says here, I'm going to read, I'm going to translate it right from Hebrew, starting at the purple there on your screen. Ki natan lechem. All right. So for to you it is given, et hamore, the teacher, the teacher of righteousness. Litzadikah. All right, and will come down to you, Geshemore, the the teaching rain, or Melakosh Berashon. All right, so it's the teaching rain and the latter at the first. So it's almost like saying that he's going to bring down to you like rain the word of God, teaching you the word of God like it was at the first. It's a restoration of the word of Almighty God. All right, then he says in verse 24, and the floor shall be full of corn and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. Do you know that when I read this right here in the book of Joy on verse 24, and the floor shall be full of corn and the vat shall overflow with wine and oil. I could not help but come to my heart the very thing that Jesus did at that wedding supper. Oh my gosh, let's go back to Joel here. Look at this up here again, right? Let's back up just a little bit. What does it say there? Where was it? The, 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 uh, here it is, right here, verse 16. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. What did Jesus do at that first wedding feast? Right? He comes in there and he takes and his mother comes to him and says, they have no wine. It ran out of wine. And Jesus says to her, it's not my time. It wasn't his time for him. He was the bridegroom. He had not gone out of the chamber as of yet. You understand? That new wine is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but in a natural, in a natural sense. Why? Because the scripture said right here, the fats or the vat shall overflow with wine and oil. And they took the pots that they used with water, they filled them all the way to the brim, to overflowing. And Jesus turned that water into wine. Now you know where the scripture is being fulfilled at, don't you? I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. So that teaching reign, right? That teaching reign. Let's go back to the Hebrew side of that. See, I will restore to you the years that the locusts and all them, the cattle, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm. See, what is it? They've ate away at it. They've taken away from it. See, with their what? With their Talmudic doctrine, with their Mishnah, with the Aruch Shulchan, with the lessons in Tanya, with the Zohar. The caterpillar, the canker worm, and the palmer worm, they've all eaten away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's pure that was delivered by the prophets originally. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and shall praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. My people shall never be ashamed. Oh my goodness. How can we miss it? Scripture was being fulfilled 2,000 years ago and we're still looking forward to come. So we've got to get a latter rain. Glory to God. The former rain already come. Some people at least believe that Jesus Christ was the former rain, but they're still looking for the latter rain. But the problem is in the Hebrew language is he says plainly, plainly, he says here, Bereshon. That former teaching is going to come down like rain 
okay? The reign of teaching the latter as it was at the beginning. All right, that's all it says, Bereshon. So in other words, the, the, the teaching reign comes down, that teaching of righteousness comes down at the latter end like it was at the first. That's what Bereshon would mean. Oh, wow. You get it in its pure form. I love it. Right? Oh, wow. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, that I am the Lord your God and none else. I come in my Father's name and you believe me not. That's what Jesus said to them. And that day you will know that I am in you. I know I am in my Father. My Father is in me and I am in you and you are in me is what he said. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. <laughs> Hello. Right? He did all the teaching. He brought the former and the latter rain. And then he died and poured out his spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. And what do we find out from Peter? That was fulfilled in the day of Pentecost. These are not drunk as you suppose it is. But that is that which fulfilled by the prophet Joel. When the Lord God said, I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your young men shall dream dreams. And your, I'm just paraphrasing it. But you know what I mean. Oh, wow. And upon my servants and handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in heavens and the earth and blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. <laughs> and it's a terrible day for what happened to them afterwards. See? And the sun did darken. The moon did turn into blood. Everything that happened back then, and yet everybody's looking for the future. Oh, glory to God, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. We got the red blood. They, you know how much hype was over the blood moons and nothing, everything they said that was going to happen, nothing happened. Oh, the rapture's going to come, it's going to be the blood moon, going to be the blood moon. 2,000 years ago it was too. And let me tell you something. They got the real deal. They got the real deal when the sun went down in the middle of the day and didn't shine. And it shall come to pass, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, in the remnant of whom the Lord shall call. Remnant. And it, what was it? The house of Israel did come home, and it was only a remnant. Though they be, as the prophet said, as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall come. And when I read to you, if we look, we'll take it right now. Let's go look at it. Let's don't even waste time. Let's go to the book of Acts again. Just for those of you, in case this is your first time hearing, you've never seen this before, and you're going like, oh my gosh, what is Brother Steve talking about? Oh my gosh, what is he talking about? Acts chapter 2, right? Right? Was it verse 36? I think it was where it says the house of Israel, right? Therefore all, let, let, okay, right here. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly. What? The house of Israel? That God hath made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Whoa. And what do we have? Okay, let me back up a little bit more. See? Um, they, were, they, they saw this great marvel that happened there. They were saying these are drunken, right? Here we go, here we go, here we go. Um, let's see here. There came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. There appeared above them cloven tongues like as a fire that sat upon them. And there were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem devout men out of every nation. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together, right? And where were these men? Where were these devout Judeans actually? Where were they at? They were from all these countries right here, all the known world and even the proselytes which includes the Gentiles Cretes, Arabians, wonderful works of God and they were all amazed and in doubt saying one to another what meaneth this others mocking these are full of new wine there's your Pharisees right there they were mocking that's exactly what they were doing they were just mocking but Peter stood up and said this is to you men in Judea and all you that dwell at Jerusalem be it known to you these are not hearkening to my words see they're not drunk as you say 
This is the third hour of the day, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Oh, wow, really, Joel? Wow, you really, seriously? And it shall come to pass. In the last day, God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh and upon your sons and all your daughters, prophesying, you, and, 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 uh, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. It's, it's amazing when we look at the prophecy of Joel here, and we can see the fulfillment of these passages here. Let me look real quick. I had a couple other scriptures up here, and I just wanted to look, see one of the reasons why. Yeah, for, for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink that puttest thy venom thereto and makest him drunk and also thou, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. This is the very one I was just showing you over here uh, in the Qumranite. Their, their belief of verse 15 of Habakkuk right there was the wicked priest. Uh, that would have been the high priest during the time that Jesus was there, that he would pursue the teacher of righteousness to consume him with the heat of his anger in the place of his banishment. All right. Now, if you take that into consideration, woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that puttest thy venom thereto. Now, that word can be translated different ways. Now, I really did a very deep uh, research on this. Chemat. Uh, is the Hebrew word that is used there. If you look at this from the Greek Septuagint, um, the Greek Septuagint uses a word, uh, lies or lies, uh, but I think the reason why they translate it here as venom, and just conjecture, I've looked at different accounts on this, uh, because of the, it can be, I think even intoxication, but it's, it's, that, it's like a poison being put in there. And that would make sense, especially in light of the fact that Yeshua called the Pharisees a bunch of vipers, a bunch of serpents. And when they, when the Qumranite community believed that, woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that putteth thy venom there too, that was that Pharisaic high priest. And I wonder, just again a conjecture, was it when they took and handed up on the sponge of vinegar there to give Jesus to drink, and he spit it out. He wouldn't have anything to do with it. Just a thought. I don't know. But I do know this much, though. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. That was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. The apostles took the gospel all over the world, insomuch that they sent a remnant of the house of Israel on the day of Pentecost back to Jerusalem and saw the fulfillment of the scriptures. And three, about 3,000 were added in that one day. Let me also remind you to 2 Peter chapter 1. What does he say in verse 18? And that this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount we have also a more sure word of prophecy wherein to you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn the day star arise in your hearts you know people out there looking for some coming star some you know right i don't know if you guys know this or not but there are rabbis out there that are teaching they still are looking for the coming messiah and they believe because of a planetary alignment that that this messiah that's supposed to be coming uh is going to come that's a by the way that's talmudic if i'm not mistaken that is a no no no, no it's not i believe that's in the zohar I have to go back, I'll go back and research it, but I believe that that teaching is actually in the Zohar. I have it here on the shelf. I'll look through it and see if I can find that there. But what I was going to say to you, though, is that this Talmudic belief, um, belief or, or Zohar belief there, is that this comes with this planet alignment and all this kind of good, uh, good stuff and shines from the east to west, all that kind of, you know, what's, what's really strange about all this is that Jesus Christ was born from that star that the wise men seen, they followed it over, and that, that was his birth. We don't need some other star to come along. But notice the way, though, that it's written by Peter here. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, wherein you do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. See, they were in the middle of the darkness already. Christ was the light that shone. 
And He can shine in our heart today by believing upon Him and accepting His Word within our heart. Knowing this verse, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation, for the prophecy came not of old time by the will of man, but by the holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Let that day star shine in you, won't you? I'm Stephen Benoon. Thank you for listening to this broadcast here. If you want to support the work we do, we really appreciate it. We thank you and God bless you for it. You can visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. I'll share that with you here on the screen. Uh, there are two things about IsraeliNewsLive.org. One, you can donate online just right here. Click here where it says or donate online. Our address uh, under Danoon Institute. 8297 Champions Gate Boulevard, number 442, Champions Gate, Florida, 33896. Also, if you want to be a part of the conference next week, February 8, 2020 Orlando Conference, just click on the link. Takes you right there. John Moore will be speaking, myself, my wife. Uh, and also, you can go to Ticket Bud if you're having any kind of problem. If you pay for it, but you don't get your ticket, put a comment down below for me. Right? You can click and make a comment. Just place a comment in here. We'll respond back to you. Because all you got to do is do a screen capture, something like that. Or just give me a note. You paid for it. Because we can see everybody that pays for it anyway. Uh, we'll have a name list anyway. So if you've paid for it, you're wanting to come, you don't have to worry about it. If you didn't get the ticket, for some reason, ticket butt is not working right. We tried to set this up. Uh, or if you want to pay at the door. Uh, that can be done as well. I don't want anybody to feel like, you know, if you paid and you didn't have, you didn't screen capture it, but you, you know you paid, just let us know. All right, nobody's going to be turned away because of that, but we are limited on seating 130 seats is all we have. We don't have a lot of tickets left, so please get your ticket while you can, and we thank you and thank you for your support of this ministry. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, or excuse me, Danoon Institute of Biblical Research. God bless you, and thank you for watching.